When we talk about waves, there's a relationship that relates the speed of the disturbance as it moves through a medium to its frequency and its wavelength. The relationship says that the speed of the wave, the speed of the disturbance, is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. Now, the, the speed of a wave, the speed at which the disturbance moves through the medium, is determined almost entirely by the characteristics of the medium itself. If you know what the elastic forces are, the strength of the elastic restoring forces, and the density of the medium, those things determine almost entirely how fast the disturbances will move through the medium. So if you fix the medium and then you change the frequency or the wavelength, the two must adjust in a compensating way so that the product of the two is always equal to that speed of the wave that's determined externally by the medium. Now sound is a disturbance. Sound is a wave. It's a wave which moves through the air. Um, sound is a compression wave. Um, you compress the air by the disturbance, you know, you go, yeah, like that. You compress the air, and then as it uncompresses, it provides the mechanism to, to cause the disturbance to move through the air from one place to another. It's a compression wave. Now, this device over here is a device that will allow us to see sound waves, but it uh, allows us, us to see them in a peculiar way. Because, the compre because sound is a compression wave, um, this device is uh, unusual. It displays the wave as if it were a shear wave or a transverse wave. Let me illustrate by making some sounds into this uh, uh, microphone, and then the box here, the device, will take those compression waves and it will display them as if they were shear waves, that is, as if the disturbance were moving up and down as the wave moves across the screen. So here is a sound, kind of an ugly sound, and you can see what look like shear waves moving across the screen, even though the waves are actually compression waves. Now, ordinarily, spoken sound it's kind of a messy looking kind of, of disturbance and, and uh, wave train. If I want to make a nice clean looking uh, signal, I could perhaps whistle at a particular pitch if I can do it. When we hear sound waves, the different pitches correspond to different frequencies. Different pitch, different frequency. Now, I get tired of uh, whistling in this device quite uh, soon, so I have another box over here, a magic box, that will whistle for me, that will produce a nice, clean frequency of a particular um, wavelength. Now, remember, the product of the frequency times the wavelength is equal to the wave speed. So if I change the frequency, which corresponds to changing the pitch, then the wavelength will have to change to, correspond, to, to compensate. If I increase the frequency, then the wavelength has to get shorter so that the product of the two is equal to the wave speed determined by the, the medium, the air. So let me try that. Here, let me um, increase the frequency. You'll hear an elevated pitch. And if you watch the pattern on the screen, you'll see that even as the pitch increases, the wavelength gets shorter. Or, as the frequency gets um, lower, lower pitch, the wavelength gets longer. <laughs>